and then give him the worship. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do better. 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 Lift your hands. Give him the praise and the glory. Give him the praise and the glory. There's a praise that is due to the name of the Father. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh! Shabare bede 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 let Jesus be glorified. Father, Lord, thank you, mighty Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you, mighty Holy Ghost. This is your service. Let Jesus be exalted. Oh, let lives be changed by your word today. Let no man, no woman return the same way they came into this house. Oh! Let them have an encounter with life. <laughs> An encounter with life. <laughs> An encounter with life. Kadoso farra se beketilia rakoto brokosi de la hasta. Thank you, Father. Say with me, I am born of the Spirit. Say Christ in me is the hope of glory. Say Jesus is alive in me. I can't hear you. Jesus is alive in me. Say, say like you say, Jesus Christ. Is alive, in me. is alive in me. Ask your neighbor, is Jesus Christ alive in you? Ask your neighbor, is Jesus Christ alive in you? Say, show it, show it, show it, show it, show it. <laughs> Glory! Woo! Glory to God. Ask your neighbor, we miss you at the, at the, at the, ask your neighbor, we missed you at the all night, at the vigil. Ask your neighbor, did you, is there a vigil? Oh, we miss you. Say, say to your neighbor, you didn't see you. We miss you at the video. We miss you at the video. Is there somebody you have not seen? You didn't see at the video. Say, we miss you at the video. What a time we had. What a time. We had a great time on Friday. It was such a great time. Somebody willing to share their experience? Somebody willing to share their experience? I know. How was your, how was the video? Awesome. Did you hear that? Awesome. Somebody say, awesome. That's what happens when you encounter Jesus. Glory to your name. Now ask your neighbor, where's your guest? Ask you, ask your neighbor, how dare you come to church without a guest? Come on. Say, what are you doing? What are you playing at? Glory to God. Let's have our seat as we get into the word. Glory to God. Spirit of God, have your way this morning. We started a series on what? Christian discipleship. And today, we are in the fourth, um, fourth episode. <laughs> um, and I'm sharing, I'm focusing on the skill of waiting. The skill of waiting, 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 waiting. The skill of waiting. The skill of waiting. Christian discipleship. Following Jesus. The skill of waiting. Hebrews 6, 12 to 15. Hebrews 6, 12 to 15. Can we really want to go? Let me hear everybody. Next verse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. 
after he had what? Patiently endured, he obtained the promise. James 1, 2 to 4. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Now, let's read this one to go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wanting nothing. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Let's read to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Let's read, people of God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ever says to your neighbor, it is not for you to know. Say to your neighbor one more time, it is not for you to know. Point another neighbor and say, it is not for you to know. Christian discipleship, the skill of waiting. What is the skill? It, ability to do well at something. That's what the skill is. The ability to do well at something. And waiting is the action of staying where one is. Okay? The ability to do well at something is a skill. And waiting is the action of staying where one is. Listen to me, child of God. In your training as a disciple, Christian disciple, please note this. Being a disciple is not just about praying in tongues. Being a disciple is not just about reading your Bible. Being a disciple is not just about using the gifts of the Spirit, prophesying, and doing amazing things. I want to show you something very powerful in your training. And if your training will be successful, and if you will continually follow Jesus, you have to know this. Because without this, your training is incomplete. Because this is one part of the training where, people's, where people, um, this is one part of the training that messes people up. That's what I'm talking about, the skill of waiting. Listen, there are some things you must know about waiting. There are things you must know. God will have to train you and make the Bible studies real to you. God will have to train you and make the Bible studies that we are teaching or whatever you're learning at church. God will have to make it real to you. Listen, you, you cannot... Be successful at God without the practical aspect. In chemistry, you know, hydrogen. We, the, we always hear, is it hydrogen now? Please correct me. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Which one makes the pop, a pop sound? It's hydrogen? All right. You see, it comes alive because they are current. They are current. It makes a pop sound. 
But you see, when we learned it, Adoji makes a pop sound. Adoji makes a pop sound. He makes a pop. Well, what is this pop? Let us hear it. We went to the lab. They took us into the lab. When we got into the lab, we did the experiment, and we, pull. we heard the pop sound, and we got tired of the pop sound. That was the practical aspect. There are things you are going to hear. Oh, yeah, I love me that. I love that. I love this. But God will make it real to you. And one of the ways God makes it real is through waiting. Through waiting, you're going to learn. Listen to me, child of God. God will have to train you as a disciple that your life is no longer yours. God will have to train you. Listen, you read it in the Bible, but you really don't believe it. You really don't agree with it. That Galatians 2, verse 3, the life that now live, Galatians 2, 20, it's not mine, but Christ. Listen to me. You like to confess it, but let us go practical. Let's see how well you can do when we go practical. We confess it. Yes, say it. The life I now live is not me that live, but Christ lives in me. It sounds nice. It sounds great. It's living through me. All right. You believe it? We're going to go practical. Because Satan is going to try that in your life. Satan is going to have to test that. When Jesus called himself the son of God, Satan had to test it. Are you the son of God? Why don't we start by you turning stones to bread? And God didn't say, Satan, don't you do that. No, no, no. He's my son. No. You have to pass the test. The test was not the ability to turn stones to bread. The, that's what the first man failed. It was not about turning stones to bread. The ability was there. It was about not listening to Satan. What you are saying is, Satan, you can't command me. You can't tell me what to do. No, you cannot. You're not going to tell me how to do, when to do, where to do. That Jesus said, that's why Jesus said to him, Jesus, Jesus interpreted that to him with the scripture. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word, see, you, you already, he was replying Satan, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, meaning you can't talk to me, Satan. You can't talk to me. Oh, you, you, you are under a curse. You are under a curse. No, Satan, you can't tell me nothing. I'm not under no curse. No, I'm not. You can't tell me nothing. God says I am not under a curse. I don't care what I'm experiencing. I don't care what is going on in my life. It does not prove a curse. It is what the word of God says that is final. Glory to God. So understand that. Glory to God. You're going to learn that your life is no longer yours. God will have to train you and show you that you cannot travel the way other people travel. You cannot go the way others go. You will discover that God has a special interest in your outcomes. Proverbs 19 verse 21. There are many devices in the heart of a man. But the purpose of God, that shall stand. Proverbs 19, 21. Many devices, many plans. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to Israel. Well, nevertheless, there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Glory to God. Listen, you will have to learn that living by his command. By the commands of the Lord, it's not a choice. No. God will have to command you. Acts chapter 1 verse 2. You read there, until the day in which it was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment, not suggestions, unto the apostles whom he had chosen you, whom he had chosen. God will have to command you. You have to train you how to receive command. In case you do not know, I will repeat it again. I've said it severally. Proof that Jesus is Lord of your life is the ability to be commanded. Jesus is not Lord if you cannot be commanded. If you are not going to do what he tells you, he's not Lord in your life. I don't, you, can, you can sing it. You can say it. You can do this. You can do that. But trust me, if you do not... There's a good song by uh, a book of songs that says that if you call me a billion times, I will answer. But most of the people singing that song are not answering nothing. Because the last time God told them to fast, they did not fast. 
The last time God told them to pray for an hour, not two hours, just an hour, they did not do it. Oh, if you, if you call me, one, a billion, I'm going to answer a billion. If you call me once, I'll <laughs> you, you're not. I'm saying to you, child of God, you have to learn how to be commanded. You will, you will begin, he needs to train you how that what he's telling you is not a choice. You're not going. You're not going to Dublin tomorrow. Ah, but I've already bought the ticket. Cancel it. But they have, it has no refund. I bought a non-refundable ticket. Cancel it. A man was traveling and, um, <laughs> oh my. He got there to the airport. God said, don't go on this journey. When he got there, he says, when I got to New York, I, was not, I, I, I wasn't feeling easy about it, this trip. He said, when I got to New York, he said, the last sign God gave me was that my wallet lost. I lost my wallet. I couldn't find it. <laughs> he said, you see, man of God, this is your last warning. We say some things to people, they say, well, what, what does it? There are journeys. I can, <laughs> there are journeys. I know people that have made some journeys. Their life is never the same today. I'm I can tell you what journeys they made. Just physical journey. I'm not talking of, uh, I'm talking of traveling. So Their life has not remained the same again till today. That man said, when I got my wallet back, I, he said, I did not come out of the airport. I phoned my agent. I need to fly back now. I'm not. He says, the man said, I did not. I'm not coming out of the airport. I'm not coming out. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm going back. That, that's how serious it is. You have to learn that you have to be skillful in waiting. You have to be skillful. Listen to me, child of God. Things will not always happen on your time and how you want it. Your prayer is not going to make it change. You should have a great prayer life, yeah. But you, you, some people think when we talk about having a great prayer, they think that having a great prayer life helps you to manipulate God in the sense of changing short, having a shortcut on your training. Oh, if I can do this, if I can pray that maybe I will not go through that. No, you cannot. When it comes to training, you have to learn everything. That's why I say to people, I said to somebody one time, I said, listen, it takes time to know God. I said, if you do not, if you are not consistent in your work with God, you are up and down. Somebody has known God since he was 20. He's been born again. And you get born again at the age of 40. Oh my goodness. You need to catch up on lost times. You need to be listening to all the messages. You cannot be somebody that's saying, you know, I don't, I, I don't know if I want to go to church today. You should, you, you should be opening the doors to the church. That's how urgent you should be taking God. Because people do not know. When we talk about knowing God, they think it's, yes, I read my Bible yesterday. Knowing God is beyond, I read two chapters in scripture. There are many things you need to know. And there are many things the knowledge of God will help you in life to do. Some things will not always, many things will not always happen on your time. When you want it to happen, your power as a believer is in waiting. Say to your neighbor, your power as a believer is in waiting. Facts to know about waiting. Facts to know about waiting. Psalms 92 verse 1, Psalms 29 verse 1. It is not a practice of wickedness by God. No. We have to say it. It's a good thing to give thanks to God. And to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High. Psalms 29, verse 1. It says, Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the, uh, the glory to his name. Give verse 2. Glory to Jesus. All right. Psalms 118, verse 1. Psalms 118, verse 1. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. What? For he is good. Because his mercy is. His mercy endureth forever. God is good. Irrespective of how you look at it. Irrespective of what you think. In spite of your opinions, God is good. Matthew 11 and Luke 11. Math, sorry, Matthew 7, 11. If you then being evil know how to give good things, gifts unto your children, 
How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Can you back up to verse 9, please? Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Verse 10. Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? He said, if you be need, we know how to do that. God is a good God. It's not a practice of wickedness. He said, how much more your heavenly father? If your earthly father, you ask him for stone, he won't, bread, he won't give you a stone. Imagine you ask your earthly father for bread and he gives you a stone. He said, your father won't do that. How much more your heavenly father? Your, if your earthly father won't do it, what do you think of your heavenly father? Many of us, our mindset, our thinking about God is wrong. Very wrong. Jeremiah 24 verse 6, please. I didn't do well one time at an exam, you know, and I worked with a bunch of people that, that when, you know, everything, because they were spiritual, they would think that it was God that was against them. Until I went to the house of God like David. It changed my outlook on God completely. Thank God he rescued me on time from having the wrong mindset about him. Early, I started seeing a good God. Many pictures of God that you have seen is very wrong. Very wrong. We have to change it. We have to change it. You don't know the pictures. You don't have the right pictures about God. Many of the evils, you think you, you point your finger at God. We just don't know him. That's why when God encountered Job, you know what he said? He said, I've heard you, Lord. He said, I'm sorry. He said, even all that I've heard is by rumors. You know what it means to live by rumors? It means that you didn't have the facts. You heard from here, you heard from here, you heard from here, you heard from here, and then you put it together and say, all right. Imagine, for that to form your body of knowledge, all that you know about God is from here and here and here, from here and there, here and there. You have never sat down to know God, to listen to the word or what we have preached. Oh, I'm, I want to learn God. Let me tell you, church is a place where you come to learn God. Let me tell you, that's what it is. My pastor preached on this. Oh, it was the entire service. I could not forget it. I, it was stuck with me forever. I started preaching to my friends, listen to me. Yeah, there is something we are not getting right. No, it's not God. Everything changed for me from then on. Oh. You say, oh, maybe you didn't. No, it's not God, brother. It's not. For I will set, let's read one to go. I will set my eyes upon them for what? For what? For good. Do you see evil there? And I will what? Bring them again to this land. And I will build them and not pull them down. God is not the one pulling people down. And I will plant them and not pluck them up. Give us Jeremiah 29, 11 to further confirm this. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know that. Let's read. Want to go? For I know what? The thoughts. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected meaning when you look into God's heart. If you could see it, all that's in his heart about you is good. So where is God setting you up with Satan? And saying, well, you, you, better, you better go now. You better go now. It's about to come out of the house. Make sure the, make sure the trailer knocks his car down and, and pin him to the wall. And let him be asking, oh, God, help me. God is not the one behind that. You better begin to rebuke the devil when you ought to rebuke him. One thing, one of the things you need to learn is how to identify Satan because he hides a lot. He hides behind so many excuses. Some things you say, oh, is it God? No, I rebuke the devil. The moment you say, I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus Christ, the scales fall off. The scales fall off. The scales fall off. He's a good God. It is not a practice of wickedness, my God. Number two, waiting brings out the best in you. James chapter 1, 2 to 4. Verse 4 of James chapter 1. Give us James 1, 2 to 4. Look at verse 4. Uh -huh. But let patience have a perfect that you may be what? A perfect and entire, complete, wanting nothing, a lack of nothing. That's what will come out of you when you are done, when you're done waiting, when you are done with the process of waiting. Number three, you discover yourself in waiting. I don't care what class you go. You will not discover some things about yourself until you wait. Look at that verse right there. You will not discover some things about yourself. You will not discover it. People don't want to wait. 
They don't want to wait. You have to understand people don't want to wait. Come on, say, I will wait. Say with me, I will wait. I will wait. Number four, the best in you is discovered if you properly go through the process. The best thing you know before is discovered. Just like you discover yourself. Now, I'm saying the best in you. Abraham did not know he could do what he did. The best in you is discovered when you wait. Say to your neighbor, wait, 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 wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Now, the next one is that everybody's time is different. Say to your neighbor, your timing is different. In the Living Bible, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Um, is it Hebrews 12, verse 2? If you have it, please give us Living Bible, Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. Now, I want you to look at this scripture here. And there is something I want to show you there. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so, a, such a huge crowd of witness to the, life, to the life of faith, let us strip of every way that slows us down, as we are the sin that so easily in this uh, progress. And let us run with endurance. The race. Do you have the Living Bible? TLB. TLB, not this one. Yeah. If you have the TLB. This one, all oh, right, there you go. Now, let us run with patience. Do you see that? The particular race that God has set before us. The particular race. So, he used the definite article T-H-E, meaning it is the particular. It is specific for everybody. Everybody has a race to run. Your time is different from mine. You can't, you, can't use, you can't use anybody's time clock and say, what about that sister over there? It looks like she's getting it easy. She's having it easy. Who told you that? Who told you that? 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12. 2 Corinthians 10 12. Here's what it says. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are what? Not wise. Comparison is a game of foolishness. A, a, a clear expression of foolishness. When you compare yourself with another and say, ah, she's having it over there. Oh, why can't I have it? Do you know that? Do you know our timing? It's like Usain Bolt and Mufara trying to run 5,000 meters. Oh, we're going to run. Who's in boat? We're going to run. Come on now. Who's in boat? Let's run this race now. Who's in boat will pass out. He will need emergency services to attend to him. By the time, he will, he will not be the one to finish that race. It's not his kind of race. He's not meant to run that race. Yes, the girls get training. That's why some people train are stricter than others. Mufara has to train in, in high mountains. Not Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt needs to get up early in the morning to train. Hard to fight training. But listen, they are races, they race, what they run. They are all sprinters, but what they run is different. He does 5,000, he does 10,000, but Usain Bolt, the, uh, the longest is 200 meters. 100 meters, 200 meters. And that's when his best come out. Let it, put him on 100 meters. You say, the fastest man alive. When he was still running, you know what I mean? His genius comes alive. Everybody wants to come there to watch him. People come to the Olympic just because of that guy. Same with Mufara. That's why some people, when I was following the Olympics, that's the only reason I was watching it. It was one person that was making me watch everything else. He was, was in both. And he put skill and style to it. 
you know, he brought a different kind of vibe to, to that 100 meters race and 200 meters. But his best was capped at 200. He would dare not go 1,000 or 5,000. But that's when the best of Mufara comes out. You don't compare yourself in this race. God has a different calling on your life. Everyone's timing is different. You have to know your kairos is different from my kairos. What is kairos? Kairos is the Greek word for a specific, defined, definite time for certain things in your life to happen. Certain things in your life, it has timing on it. Right. The next one is most of your questions are answered during your time of waiting. Psalm 73, 1 to 5 and 14 to 17. Look at what it says. Truly God is good to Israel and to even to such as are of a clean heart. Next verse. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, but for I was envious at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of who? The wicked. That's four. For there are no, we may have to read more verses. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Everything is going good for them. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like the other men. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have, they, they have more than heart could wish for. Than heart could wish. <laughs> they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Meaning they, 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 that, that's pride. Therefore, its people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the most that is, is he aware of what is happening? And they say, uh, next verse. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart. What am I cleansing my heart for? What, what is this holiness about? In vain, and wash my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chasing every morning? What is this string about? If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend again the generation of my children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Verse 17. Oh, God, that's why the church, that's why God put the church here. Until I went into the sanctuary. You can't know it by yourself. No, no, no. I, I'm reading the word by my own. What has, where have you got into? Reading the word by yourself. I'm going to just, you know, I'm trying to know God now. No, sorry, you're wrong. Until I went to the sanctuary of God, then understood I their hand. This was the prophet. He said, I, I went to church. He said, I went to church. This was the prophet. David was a prophet. He wrote, he wrote about Christ Jesus coming. Surely thou didst set them in sleeping. This was the knowledge that was coming in his time of waiting. Thou didst set them in sleepy places. Thou casted them down into destruction. Ah, let's, let's leave it there. Next one, your flesh will get better, will get the better of you at times in this process. While you're waiting, your flesh will get the better of you at times. You feel like what is going on. But if you know it's, it's a part of your training, you will cheer up. Just as we just read. Your flesh will get the better of you at times if you let it. Next one, you might feel lonely or try to look for others like you for closure. <laughs> for some closure, you say, ah, it's, it's, uh, I just got, I, I feel lonely now. I feel lonely. It looks like I'm the only one doing it. It's happening to only me in the world. Luke 1, 38 to 46 and 1 Peter 5, 89. You are not the only one. Look one. Look at this. And, be, and Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Okay. Now, before that, there is this verse. I want us to back up to media. If you can help me look for it. Um, 
I think is verse what now? Haha, <laughs> verse is it 36? We just put it verse 36, please. Just just that verse alone. And behold, you see, after he was done talking to Mary about, listen, you're going to have a child. Look at what the angel said. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Now, let's go to verse 39. And Mary arose in those days after the angel told her, you see, you have to wait for God to give you the right networks. Don't say, I'm looking for some closure. I need somebody, be, people like me. And then you, you begin to engineer relationships that God is not behind. Look at this one. And went to the ill country with haste in, this, in the city of Judah. Keep going. And she entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass. When Elizabeth had the salute of Mary, the baby lived in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, she heard the prophecy. When it is the right relationships in your life, you will hear prophecies, you will be stirred up, you will be encouraged. What happened? It was because of Mary coming in contact with Elizabeth that the prophecy that John would be filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb came to pass. Because she was already filled with the Holy Ghost. How was John going to be filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb when they encountered um, Mary? Because the angel has said to Mary, when Mary said, how ah, is it going to be? He said, the power of the eye will overshadow thee. So she was already filled with the Holy Ghost. So when she encountered Elizabeth, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And if Elizabeth, once Elizabeth got filled with the Holy Ghost, her baby was filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you know how Zechariah was filled with the Holy Ghost? When Zechariah entered the house and encountered Elizabeth, she, he was also filled with the Holy Ghost. You read from verse 69, he also started prophesying. When that was a man whose mouth was short, right relationship. God has to orchestrate it. You are not wise enough to get the relationships. Oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work it out. First Peter 5, verse 89. Be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. Whom resisted fast in the faith. Whom resisted fast in the faith. Whom resisted fast in the faith. What's the next thing? Knowing, knowing, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You are not alone. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. Every man is tempted. 1 Corinthians 10 13. He says there are no temptation that has taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Obakataya. But God is faithful. God is faithful. In your waiting time, God is faithful. You will not have you to go through stuff that you can't handle. It will or out of the same temptation, it will make a way for you. It will make a way out of it. Oh, it looks at me, I'm the only one in the world. You're not the only one in the world. There's been others who went through it, and they did not fail the test. There's been others who went through it, and they waited it out. That's the fact the Bible says, the best example, the God who have people that you can follow. Hebrews 6, 12 to 15, it said, be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. He then he pointed at Abraham. He said, look at Abraham. In Isaiah, he said, look at Abraham, your father. He said, he, he said, I called him alone. Well, I'm the only one. No, you are not the only one. Elijah said, I am the only one. I'm the only one. God said, I have reserved for me 7,000 men who have not bowed their, their knee to Baal. Another real fact you need to know that it can, be, it can be difficult to be spiritual at this time. If you look at your flesh, it means if you look at what is happening, it will be difficult to be spiritual. Romans 8, 5 to 9. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot, cannot, cannot please God. Verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh. It so be that the Spirit of God lives in you. I refuse to be, I refuse to take information from the flesh. I refuse to, to, to allow the flesh to frustrate me in my time of waiting. I refuse it. 
I refuse it. All about it. Another fact you have to understand is that you develop increased wisdom in, at, 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 in this time of waiting. You are going to develop increased wisdom. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7 to 10. I will teach very soon on the myth called an answer prayer. And, and look at what it says. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation that was given to me, a son in the flesh, the messenger of Satan. That, that's telling you it's not from God. To buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. That's the knowledge that Paul got from that. That when that thing was there, you know what? I, I, I learned. I learned not to be proud. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Father, this thing is Satan that's bringing, but I, let it depart. Look at what God said. Sometime, son. Sometime, son. It's not about taking it away. It's about the grace to thrive in the midst of it. And what did he say? Verse 9, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In your time of waiting, you see the pride in your heart. You see how proud you are. You see your arrogance. You see how that you are so self-sufficient. You see your arrogance comes out. So with this amount, with this little money you have now, nobody can talk to you. So what if you get to have money and you, you get to have the kind of Elon Musk money? What are you going to do? What will you do? You're going to be saying to the pastor to come to your house to preach. So you, why are you having services at that place? You come and preach in my house. Don't, don't preach that message today. You develop increased wisdom. Ha! Paul, always having answers the way he wanted it. God said, listen, son, in this time, the answer is I have given you the grace. God answered him. He said you just need grace to thrive in the midst of it. That's the answer. You need grace to thrive in the midst of it. It's not about taking it away. Let me give you another fact. When it comes to waiting, you can't control it. You better know that. We, we don't like this one now. We don't like it. Because every man, every human being likes to be in control. Ah! Absolute. This is when you have what you call absolute silence. This one, we don't like it. Absolute silence. What did Jesus say to them? He said, would you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? <laughs> he said, it is not for you to know. That's how, how, that's how we started this out. It is not for you to know. When the, when the power is in the... In the, in the, the you do not, it's not for you to know the time that the Father has in his hand. It is not for you to know. But you shall receive power. That's, what the, that's the limit of what you need to know. You receive power. Matthew 15, 22 to 28. Write it down. You will feel ignored at this time. You will feel ignored. That's right. Syrophoenician woman came crying unto Jesus. Have mercy on me, Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grieved of the fact with the devil. Next verse. But he answered her not a word. And the disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after her. Next verse. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lordship of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. That's how the best will come out of you while you're waiting. Your pride will be broken. You will see yourself in God's light. And he asked, but he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. We we're going to see how easily offended this thing that you have, this trait to be easily offended, it will break up during waiting. It will break up. And she said, Trust, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Wow. Look at what Jesus said. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made old from that very hour. She put a spin on it. Ah! He said, this dog is not going back empty-handed. <laughs> what, what did Jesus mean by dog? He wasn't insulting her. Foreigner. 
meaning you do not have a relationship with God. And that's what he was talking about. And at that time, Jesus was only sent to Israel. You understand? He said, you're a stranger to what is happening here. You're a stranger. He said, yeah. But the stranger is also, ah! Jesus said, great is thy faith. What would you Jesus looking for? Faith. You don't know how weak your faith has been. You don't know. Waiting, waiting exposes you. Whether or not you are in faith, waiting exposes you. That's one of the qualities you need to thrive in every area of your life. But it is your waiting time that exposes that you have not been in faith. Then you discover all that I've been trying. I pray, I pray. Your prayer is unbelief. But I pray, I pray, I pray. I told you, when I went through that pain that was there in my back and I kept decreeing, the Holy Ghost showed me, said, you see, whenever you prayed and cursed it, you were hoping that when something changes, you will believe. He says, no, you're wrong. It was when you spoke to it that it happened. God says, if your neighbor needs something from you today, Proverbs 3.27, don't tell him to come tomorrow. He's setting a precedence for us how to live. Don't say to your neighbor, when you can give it to your neighbor now, don't tell him come back tomorrow. God obeys that principle himself. But do you know what our problem is? We don't really believe God. That's the problem of belief. They don't really believe. They pray. They know. They already got concluded. But I don't, know, I don't think he's going to do it. You're not going to receive. If you open your heart, you discover what I'm telling you. I've been there. I was praying, but I examined myself in God's light, and I discovered there's doubt here. I keep coming, oh, yeah, it's going, it, well, I hope it's going to do it. No, it's not a hope. I believe when I, when, whatever you desire, when you pray. That's what the word says. It's not that the devils you are fighting is stronger. Another fact you have to understand is that waiting is not forever. That's the last fact right there. Waiting is not forever. Say to your neighbor, waiting is not forever. It's not forever. All right, now, he told them to wait for the promise of the Spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, you see, it has to fully come. Say to your neighbor, it has to fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Let me tell you something right now. There's people saying, oh, Lord, if only God would do this in my life, if only God would do this in my life, I'll be more serious in the things of God. It's a lie. You will not be. You will find something else that you want him to do to be this, you would never, I have never experienced anybody who said, if God does this in my life, I'll be this. They never, they, they never do it. They never become it. You are not going to be, it's been there from time immemorial in the word of God. Nobody can change like that. That wa waiting is not forever. Say to your neighbor, waiting is not forever. Say, but you can't control it. You must wait. God's not going to change it. You can go on ahead and do whatever you want. God's not going to change what he has planned for you. Ah, 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 ah. He's going to go over there. Oh, we can't let him go. Bye. God's not going to stop you. When you're ready, come back. This is, you're going to start back from level nine. What happened to Abraham? Abraham, uh, God has spoken to him. Abraham said, eh, eh, eh. came in the house. Sarah said, I wonder if you could go into my maid. Your maid, okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. But someone that has just heard God. That's why you are hearing the word today. So you can do the right qualities in you. Don't think that because somebody heard God, they are going to do the right thing. That's why a lot of people who function in the gifts of the spirit, they don't do the things of God. I know what I'm talking about. They, they, they prophesy, oh, yeah, somebody here, oh, they tell you they, they, they have a prophetic ministry, but they, don't, they are very disobedient. I'm talking from experience, not my experience, but I have, I have spoken to them, I have related with a lot of them. They don't obey the voice of the Spirit. I'm telling you, you see them manifest, it's a gift. That does not mean you have the quality of this thing we're talking about. But God wants to build this certain, this certain quality in you. So most of those qualities will come when you wait. I've talked to many people who can't wait. It's a great quality to have. Patience. Talk to a man one time. Ah, you have to, you see, that, I don't have it. No, you have to cultivate it. Did you know you have to cultivate it? 
What to do in season of waiting? Let me round up. What to do in your season of waiting? What to do in your season of waiting? James 1, 2. Number one, count it all joy. Ha! Glory to God. Ha! Father, I refuse to be discombobulated. I refuse to be frustrated. I'm not going to be frustrated. I'm not going to lose my mind. I am going to look on the Lord. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. I will keep my eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Sorry, I concluded that before you came. I made up my mind before you came. I will wait on the Lord. You're not going to make me hurry. I'm going to enjoy it. What is it telling you? Count it all joy. Enjoy your season of waiting. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. I count it all joy. 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 Jesus, God in himself, God in flesh. Yet, what training did he need? He needed to learn how to be in, in this body of earth for 18 years before his ministry came forth. From 12, he was already solving questions and riddles of lawyers. People went to school. But he had to wait 18 years. Oh, what is he learning? He, he was there in the workshop with his daddy, earthly daddy, and they were walking there. He learned how to do, he learned customer service. This is God in flesh. He learned customer service. He learned how to talk to people. He learned how to work in the team. He learned everything. Okay, this is how you talk to people. You don't talk rough. You don't do that. You don't do that. I thought as God, he just, he just needed to just come and say no. He, need, uh, he needed to know how to live in this flesh. And it became a pattern for us. So you can't give God any excuse because he was in your flesh. He lived in your flesh. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Ah, look at that. He, listen, whatever anybody is going through that you are feeling sorry for them, you are the reason. You are probably prolonging it because you are not, that person is not the person, that, it's, not the, it's not who you need to worry about. It is you that you need to worry about. What did Paul say? He said, do not think at my tribulations for you. Don't think. Number two, build and grow in your knowledge of God. Second Peter 1, 2. 2 Peter 1, 1 to 2. Build, build and grow in your knowledge of God. Simon Peter is servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied. How? Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Child of God, you must grow in your knowledge of God. Don't be idle. Develop your spirit and develop your mind. Number, number three, number one, count all your number two, build and grow your knowledge of God. Number three, build your prayer life. Jude one twenty. rise like an edifice, higher, higher, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the spirit. Build up yourself on your most holy faith. Build up your prayer life. Do you have a prayer life? Do you pray? Do you have a time of worship? If you can, do you, do you fellowship with, okay, we're going to get there. Number, number, uh, whatever number I'm on, number four, train yourself up. Busy your mind with things. Get a skill. Oh, well, I'm waiting. I'm going to manifest. Once this thing happens, I'm going to, I'm going to be, you know, oh, no, 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 no. Acts chapter one, look at verse 14. Let me look for it. Look at what happened here. While before the Holy Ghost fell on them through, you know, and they received the gift of tongues. Acts chapter 1 from verse 14. Now watch this. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up. Remember, Judas already fell out, right? They became 11. Peter stood up and said, men and brethren... I said, the number of names together were about an 120, those who gathered, right? Men and brethren, this scripture must need be fulfilled. He talked about what happened with Judas Iscariot and all of that. He was numbered with all verse 17 and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity and fallen headlong, he burst asunder. Now what this, I want to show you something very powerful. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem so much that 
that that, as that field is called in the proper tongue, a keldema, that is to say the field of blood. Now, what is, anyway, it, it talked about what happened. No, 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 no. Let me go to verse, um, beginning from the baptism of John, wherefore, let me, verse 21, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Verse 23, and they appointed to, to Joseph called Basabas, who, who was the name Justice and Matthias, and they prayed, saying, Thou, Lord, which knowest the heart of all men, shew whether of, of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place. All right? And they gave forth their lots and the lot fell upon Matthias and it was numbered with the 11 apostles. Okay? Now, here's one thing. You know, they cast lots here. I need to make a point here. This was before the Holy Ghost came. You have the Holy Ghost. You should not be doing lots casting and now say, oh, let's see which one God is saying. Husband one, husband two, three men have spoken to me. Uh, I don't know which one it is. Karo, bo, 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 bo. You spray in tongue. That's not the Holy Ghost. You, you will pick a devil if you try that. What I'm telling you is that that was before the Holy Ghost, and they never tried that again. And God allowed their ignorance. Here's the point that you have to understand. The moment they secured the twelfth person, chapter two, chapter two, go to chapter two. The moment their number was complete. So in your time of waiting, there is something you need to learn. In your time of waiting, you just say, you know what, I have time. You, you're not learning anything. You're not upgrading yourself. God is saying you are delaying your kairos. Do you know people can delay their kairos? Oh, it must happen. It, it, it has to happen at 28. It will not happen at 28 if you don't learn what you need to learn. You can delay your kairos. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, so... Even God is watching their kairos. The Holy Ghost is coming. But what preparation are you doing? They needed to be 12 apostles. 12. There can be others, but these 12 has to be made up. They, were, they had reduced to 11. The moment they sorted that number, they increased back to 12. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is expecting you to develop yourself. Whilst you're waiting to be married, what do you know about marriage? In spite of what I knew, I haven't lived with women and all of that. I read books on marriage. I read books on marriage. I listen to videos on marriage. And I'm not talking from jokers. I'm not talking of video of jokers who are saying, who don't know God. I'm talking about people that are well versed in scripture. I learned from them. I read, I read different books on marriage. I bought them. I read them. Give them to my wife as well. I have, a, I have a read of it. Somebody wants to be married. No book. He hasn't read a book. He doesn't know who, who. He doesn't know even the real guys who are talking on marriage. He doesn't know. He doesn't have any material. He just say, you know what? He, uh, is he not really related with men, uh, with a woman? I know how to do that. You, do you really know how to do that? You haven't read no book on marriage. You want to go to uni. What have you learned about the first year? What it means to survive the first year? The mistakes of first year students, freshmen in college, they all always have the lowest of grades. That's why they don't usually use the first year. Do you, have you learned that? Have you learned the struggles? How to, how to money management in uni? You have learned, you need to learn that. You need to know this stuff. Business development, dealing with co-workers. You want to work in a great team, but yet you don't know how to work in a team. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to get it. Don't worry, I know what to do. I worked in a job years ago, and I had somebody to shadow me, and the person said to me, oh, my goodness, you just know what to do every, in every place. I, it's training. You know what to do. Because I wasn't waiting. I was doing something whilst waiting. People want, uh, they are waiting for, for their carers. Yeah, but don't worry. When the man shows up, the house is not set. Your room is ev everywhere. Everything, things are everywhere. In your, in, your, in your bedroom. You are intolerant. There are people intolerant. 
A small argument, they are breaking something. Kairos is far. You are slamming doors. Little argument in the house. With your own family members. We are talking of somebody who has never been in your family. Who doesn't know all of those stuff, tendencies about you. And you are praying, my Kairos, Lord, what are you delaying me for? No, it's not coming. Why? You are delaying your Kairos because you're not ready. A man said many years ago, whilst his mother was still living, he was saying, Mom, I'm going to get me a car. I'm going to get a car. I'm going to get a car. I'm going to get a car. He used to have one old car, but it was in the garage. And he, he, said, he said, I learned a lesson from my mom. My mom said, ah, you want God to bless you with a car when you won't even make room for it. He said, I took the old car from the garage. I got a, fr- a partner of mine. We moved the car out. This car is useless. So we, we, we removed it. I brushed up the, the garage, cleared it out, cleansed it. The moment, he said, the moment I did that, my mind opened up. He said, I had a car within a week or a month. He made room for it. You are not making ready for it. Your heart is not ready for it. Train yourself. Busy your mind. Next, fellowship with other believers and serve God well in church. <laughs> Listen, oh, that job is coming. If you are not ready, if you are not having time to go to church and you're wanting to be that re- have this kind of job that you're looking at, how are you going to go to church when that job comes? And in tough times, when you have never been, been hard on yourself, Okay, you've not been hard on tough on yourself. And okay, so you know, marriage, whether woman or man. If you're not, if you're not making time to fellowship with other believers, do you think when you have children, you'll be able to fellowship with other believers? Or when you get married, one of you are going to say one day, oh, I feel a bit, uh, I'm just under the weather today. But somebody's going to say, it doesn't matter how, whether you're under the weather or on top of the weather, we are going to be in church. That's why we, are, we need our men today. Men are very powerful in the house. Men are very powerful in their house. It doesn't matter what a woman does, but the man is very powerful. But today, they want to feminize our women. We rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus. They want to feminize our women, turn them to women. No, we need our men. In the house that I grew up, you, how are you going to say it, that you're not going to church? If it was a cold in your body, that cold would jump out of you. When my daddy shows up, and he didn't have to do anything. His presence was enough. Say to your neighbor, we need men. There are people, any slight pressure, they quit. They quit. Look at Luke 4, 16. Luke 4, 16, Proverbs 22, verse 6. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and he came to Nazareth, where he had been what? Brought up. Do you see that scripture? He had been brought up, watch, and as his custom was, it's a colon before that. The custom was as a result of it being brought up. Proverbs 22 verse says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. He was brought up in Nazareth. Oh, why did he not say, no, daddy, I'm not, go- I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't want to stay in Nazareth. Parents don't train you based on what you like. They train you based on what they think is right. I don't care what you think about it. That's what the word of God said. You are a child. You don't know what you want. You don't know what you need to do. I don't care what age you are. You're still a child. Oh, you know, they are 17 now. They are 18 now. They are 19 now. I used to work with some of them. But it doesn't mean you're still a child. You haven't known. They don't let this country deceive you that you are 18 or 19 and then you know what to do. Man, most of them don't have an idea what life means. They don't even know where to start. Don't let that 18 deceive you. There's a lot of 27-year-olds who are still, <laughs> let's not go there. But what I'm saying to you is that, child of God, allow yourself to be brought up. You need to be brought up. And finally, focus on yourself. Reduce movements. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 4. Focus on yourself. You might think that you have a lot of time, people of God. You don't have a lot of time. God is looking at your motive. You don't have a lot of time. Account for your time and make the most of it so that your training won't be much longer. Let's read this verse. One to go. One to go. Verse 11. Do you have verse 11, please? Give us verse 11. 
Right now, let's rewind to go. Yeah? <laughs> you know, I love what is, there's a, there's a version that says, and to mind your own business. See, I know you, you care, but some people, it's not about, it's not care. They just do not. That's why some people who have not grown, they don't mind their own business. Just. He says, study to be quiet. Ah, too much talk, 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 talk. He says, study to be quiet. You always have an opinion, and those opinions are not valid. They are not right opinions. He said, and do your own business. To work with your own hands as we commanded you. You focus on this. You focus. You have not even, what about your faith? Ah, Lord, Lord, you are not ready for it. You are not ready for it. Let's rise up on our feet. Say to the Lord, Lord, I will not, I will not waste my time. I will not waste my life. I refuse to allow my life to be wasted. I will take the necessary training. Yes, Lord, I give myself to your to discipleship. I give myself to training. I give myself to spiritual training. I will not fail. I will not faint. I want to hold your neighbor's hand. Hold the neighbor's hand. Hold someone's hand. Yeah, and hold across. And also, don't. Don't be left out. Connect with people around here. Oh, Basha, God, Abaya. Encourage your neighbor in the Lord. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Sabalaka du Buridias. Sebreke de Breke de Bias. Say to your neighbor, I'm not going to let you quit. I'm not going to let you quit. No, you need to be encouraged. Say, you need to keep waiting. Keep waiting. We waiting. Keep... Say, God is coming through. God is coming through. Say, it's coming big. It's coming big. Say, do not lose heart. Say, don't lose heart. Say, it's coming big. Be encouraged in the Lord, sister. Be encouraged in the Lord, brother. Sobaliados. Sobaliados. Father, you're walking with us. You're walking in us. We trust you, Father. I want to say to yourself, I am encouraged in the Lord today. In the name of Jesus. Say, 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 Lord, I will wait. Say, I will wait. I will wait. I will not quit the trainings. I will not lose heart. I will stay put. I will reduce movements. I will stay planted. Help me, Holy Ghost, to wait. You see, David said, I lost heart unless I had hoped. That I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want to tell the Holy Ghost right now, in different areas of your life, where you know this area, I'm waiting here. You know those certain areas. and Just lift your hand and say, Lord, I receive help. You can let your hands go right now. Say, Lord, I receive help in this area. Mention those areas. Don't, don't pray in a vacuum. Be specific about those things. Be specific. If you're there, you have not been born again, wherever you are today. You have heard the word. You have heard the word today. There's no salvation in any other. You must be born again. Wherever you are, you say this prayer with me right now. Say, oh Lord God, I come to you today. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that he died for me and that God raised him from the dead. I receive the gift of eternal life. I declare that I'm born again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I pray for this person today. Wherever you are today, the grace is multiplied unto you. That you stay steadfast in Christ Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Father, I pray for courage to wait. I pray for strength to wait for everybody under the influence of my voice. Oh, strength to wait. Receive it right now. Receive the grace to wait. Receive the strength to wait. Receive the grace to tarry. Receive the grace to tarry. Come on, say, I receive the grace to tarry. The grace to tarry. The grace to tarry. The grace to tarry. Zabaraka suaras, zabereke dubrias, mando kirabas. The grace to identify when it is the devil that's walking behind the scenes. I receive it. That I'll be sensitive to say, no, this is not. This is not God. This is the devil, and I rebuke that devil. If there be anybody here under any 
manipulation and oppression of the devil and think that it's God that's doing something is the devil. I rebuke that influence of Satan. I break every oppression of the devil in your minds. Every lie of Satan in your mind. I, I, I break their influence on your, circle, on your outcomes by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. We give you thanks and praise. We want to give right now. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Oh, thank you for helping us to be consistent in our work of faith. We advance and we multiply today. We increase in our substance, in our, our materials. We increase financially. Thank you, Father, for increasing us in our faith. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Remember, this one is the Bible study. And then on Saturday, we have our soaking two hours. Make sure to be part of it. Look at your neighbor and prophesy. Say, brother, sister, go forward now. Go forward. Say, receive strength and courage to wait. Say, don't sleep off in your time of waiting. Don't be distracted in your time of waiting. It is time to seek the Lord with the whole of your heart. Say, don't be distracted. Get yourself busy with serving God. Say, get busy serving God. Say, strength is yours. Grace is yours. In Jesus Christ's name. Go around and shake someone's head and say, have a blessed and a, free, and a fruitful and a favored week. In Jesus Christ's name. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you again on Wednesday. Bye.